Hello, my name is Julia. Today we're going to be painting our mushrooms in the forest. We are going to be using acrylic paints. So let's go over our colors really quick. So I've got cadmium yellow medium. And that's just for the moon. Titanium white. Thalo green. Cadmium red medium. Alizarin Crimson, Burnt Sienna, and Mars Black. I've got an 11 by 14 canvas here. And for my brushes, I have a size 12 round bristle brush, a one inch flat brush, a half inch flat, an eighth inch flat and you really don't need all of these sizes of flats it's just kind of personal preference and what you have available and then i have a size seven pointed round brush and then just a little detail brush i have some paper towels a little bit of water this painting is for beginners so even if you've never painted before um, you can definitely try this painting out so we're going to start off with our large size 12 bristle round brush dip it in your water this brush holds a ton of water so you need to take your brush and squeeze out any extra water and then you can lightly dab it on your paper towel and we're going to start off by just painting the canvas black so you're just going to take black paint lots of it and start spreading it around and you want just enough to Cover the canvas, but you don't want it to take forever to dry. So if you get some thick areas, this brush is really great actually for filling in backgrounds. And if you'd like to paint your edges as you go, you can do that as well. I'd get the front painted first, that way it can start to dry and then you can go work on your edges. And if you kind of scrub this brush, it definitely puts it on really thin for you so it'll dry quicker. Or you can always use a blow dryer if you're in a hurry. And you can add a little bit of water to your paint if you want to, just to help you spread it out. Okay, so after I get my canvas filled in here, I'm gonna go over it with one brush stroke just to make it smooth. So you could go in any direction really, but I would just stick with the same direction. And after you get that filled in, you can just sit back and let that dry. Okay, so once your canvas is dry to the touch, the edges don't need to be completely dry, but the middle should be pretty dry. I'm gonna go ahead and move my brushes to the side here just so I can paint right here to show you. We're gonna do the moon next. So I recommend using either your smallest brush or your size seven pointed round brush, depending on how big you want your moon to be. I'm gonna use the little detail brush, but I'm also gonna show you with the larger brush here on the side so that you can see, because it's pretty small. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is mix up your moon color. So I'm using my detail brush. I'm gonna dip my brush in my water, dab it on my paper towel, and I'm gonna take some white and I'll do just a teeny bit of yellow. A little bit of yellow goes a long, long way. And you have to add a ton of white to get it back to where you want it. So I'm mixing up, this is called a tint, when we're using a lot of white and just a little bit of color. And I want a really pale yellow for my moon. If your brush has lots of globs of paint, you can kind of wipe some of it off, make sure you don't have too much. 
So you can really add your moon anywhere that you'd like. I'm gonna go ahead and place mine in the golden mean. So the golden mean is if we divided the canvas into thirds here, into thirds over here, and it'd be somewhere over in the top left. So it doesn't need to be exact, but if you wanna eyeball it, you can eyeball halfway down the canvas. If you're using 11 by 14 like me, go over about two inches and it's gonna be somewhere in here. So you're gonna start off, start off very small, like you're making a small circle because it's naturally gonna grow and it's easier to make it bigger than it is to make it smaller. So you start off just making a circle. I'm gonna make mine a little bit bigger, but I kind of want it to be small for this painting, not too big. And it doesn't need to be a perfect circle. We have computers for that kind of art now. For this, this was made by you by hand. And that's what makes it special. So I'll show you over here on the side so that you can see We've got just a big, pale yellow circle. And now to add some shadows into our moon, I'm gonna mix my pale yellow colors. You can take a little bit and set it off to the side if you'd like to. And I'm actually gonna add a little bit of this burnt sienna and mix that in. And again, a little bit goes a long, long way. And I'm gonna make kind of a medium color. And then without grabbing any more paint, I'm gonna grab some more of my burnt sienna. And I'm gonna make an even darker version. So now, I'm just gonna wipe my brush off on the side here. And you can clean it off if it's really dark. So what I want to do is just make some little splotches on the moon. So I'm going to take my medium color here. So in this case, our, our pale yellow, our tint here, would be called our mother color. And then these are its two little babies. So now I'm going to make some spots on the moon. So I'm going to use a dabbing brush stroke where my brush is kind of lifting up and down and this is going to create some texture up close you might go what in the world is this but from far away you'll have the illusion i'm going to make this just a little brighter so that you can see so then you would take your lighter color and you short brush strokes. So maybe I'm gonna add some to the top, a little to the side. You want it to be kind of messy. And after you do it with the lighter color, you're gonna go in with your darker version. So I'll show you with this here and just lightly tapping and it's gonna look kind of messy up close, but from far away, it's gonna give you the illusion of a moon. And once you get all of those in, if you wanna add some straight burnt sienna, just do a couple little taps. And if it gets to be too much, you could always go back in with more pale yellow. So I've got my lighter color. I'm going to do some of my darker now. And it doesn't have to be these colors too. Like if you wanted to do more purple, alizarin crimson is going to give you a more purple look. And you could add a little bit of that. if you wanted to. 
So once you get your moon filled in, if you want to add a little glow around it, go ahead and clean your brush out in your water by pressing it against the bottom of the glass and spinning it in a circle. And I'm going to leave my brush a little bit damp. I'm going to go back to my pale yellow. And because my canvas is dry, if you want to, you can rest your hand on top of it if you're painting flat and not on an easel. And I'm going to go around my moon. And if it's too much paint, if it's too dark, and it's just making your moon look big, bigger, clean your brush out again. Because you want it to be a little bit watery. To do a little glow. And then I'm going to do some light brush strokes around the moon. Wipe my brush off on the side if it's a little too much. And another way to do this is you can spin in a circle. Or you can go around the edges and just do little short brush strokes. And just kind of do it without hesitation. If you don't like it, it's so easy to just paint over it in black again. I just love glowing moons, so if you love glowing moons, you are at the right place. The last thing I'm going to do is take my detail brush, and I'm just going to do a couple little dabs of straight white on my moon, and I'll show you that with the big brush over here. Just a couple little dabs of straight white and that's just gonna give more texture to your moon. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our kind of background. So I'm going to drop off that detail brush in the water. I'm going to clean out my large bristle brush, spin it in a circle, squeeze it out. Make sure you get most of the black out and then dab it on your paper towel. And we're gonna want this brush to be kind of fluffy. So you can kind of brush it on some paper towel just to get the bristles a little bit poofed out. And a little bit damp is perfect, but if it's too wet, you're definitely gonna notice. All right. So I'm gonna set that to the side and I'm gonna start off with my small flat brush, dip that in my water, and I'm going to mix up a color. So we're going to do some of our thalo green, one of my favorites. I'm going to bring that over. And we're going to mix in a little bit of white. Again, a little bit's going to go a long way. And if you want, if you love bright, bright colors, then this is probably the color for you. You can leave it just like this. I'm gonna neutralize mine a little bit. And to create something more neutral, you wanna add in its complementary colors. So I'm gonna add in some of my cadmium red here. Again, a little bit's gonna go a long way. So you can mix those together. And you may have to play around a little bit with adding white because the white is what's going to make it show up on your black canvas. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, wipe your brush so you don't have too, too much paint on there. How this brush works is if you use the edge of your brush, 
you can make a very thin line. If you use the flat part of your brush, you can make a very thick line. If you use more pressure, your line will get thicker. So even if I'm using the edge of my brush, if I press down really hard, I'll still get a thick line. And same thing with using the flat side. If I press down really hard, it'll get even thicker. So just keep in mind kind of how much pressure you're applying. Right now, we're going to outline our path. So I'm gonna use the edge of my brush. I'm gonna to go to the left side of my canvas and I'm gonna go up about halfway. So if you want to, you can make a little mark there for you to shoot for. Then I'm gonna go down halfway in between my halfway point and the bottom of my canvas, so a quarter of the way. And I'm gonna go over to the middle of my canvas about halfway in this direction. So I've got a little point here. So now you have one, two, three points. That's gonna help you kind of aim. So you're gonna use the edge of your brush. You can start at this point. And you're gonna go down and then swerve back around. So you're kind of cutting out a little, a little triangle here. Now I'm gonna create a line that's curved but is parallel to that line. So again, first, if you wanna make a little point to shoot for, you can go to this bottom corner, go over halfway in the bottom of your canvas and you can make a little point. So now I'm gonna come up here. I'm gonna go up just about a centimeter, use the edge of my brush and I'm gonna follow along next to my path. And I'm gonna go out and then come back in. And that's gonna be our path. And I know there's a little bit of glare from the black paint. My lighting isn't honestly the best. So I'll make mine darker so that you can see it, but you want yours to be very light, like you can barely see it, because it's just for your aim. All right, so now I'm gonna show you a couple ways that you can do this. So the first thing we're going to create little brush strokes, little blades of grass. So you can use either of your square brushes, your very small one, your eighth inch or your quarter inch, or sorry, your eighth inch or your half inch. And you can use the edge of your brush to create little brush strokes. So you can try that out and see how that feels. and just start to get familiar with your brush. So especially over the line on the path, I wanna cover up that line. That was just so that we kind of have an outline, but we want the edge of it to look very rough. So you may find that you really like to do your grass with these little short brush strokes. It takes a lot longer but it's kind of therapeutic to just be making those little brush strokes. So I'm gonna create now a couple little pine trees in the back. So without drawing a line, I want you to imagine that there's kind of a horizon line right here. You can use the edge of your brush to do a vertical line. And I'll show you on the side here. And then you're gonna do little short brush strokes starting from the center and they kind of curve and go out to the right and curve and go out to the left. And these should be, you should barely be able to see these. So if it's too bright, add more of your green and more of your red and less of your white. So I'm gonna do a few of these, so maybe one there, maybe I'm gonna do a really teeny one here and then maybe one that's a little bit bigger over on this side. And when you get down to the bottom, you can do some little short brush strokes that go straight down to kind of fill it in. Because these are just background trees. 
So from this point, you could go in with this brush kind of filling in the rest of this. I am going to switch now, so I'm just gonna wipe off some of the extra paint here, wipe some on my paper towel, drop that in my water, and I'm gonna switch to my bristle brush. So in the back, whatever's furthest from you is naturally gonna appear to be less colorful, less bright. So in the back, I'm gonna use this, and as I move closer to the bottom of the canvas, I'm gonna add a little bit more white. So I'm gonna start off with the color that I have here. And notice how I'm dabbing to pick up the paint. So how this brush works is if you have the bristles kind of fanned out like this, it can make lots of little teeny brush strokes. Now, if I press down really hard, I'm gonna get a really big brush stroke. So I'm just very, very lightly dragging. And you can do that on your palette or on a piece of paper to just practice a little bit. But honestly, it's hard to see a lot in the black anyway. So you have some ability to kind of practice right on your canvas. So now I'm gonna do little teeny short brush strokes starting along my horizon line. So going right across the middle of my canvas here. And I wanna start at the top and move my way down. And that way the grass can kind of layer on top of each other. So I'm covering up this line and if you keep brushing and brushing, what's gonna happen, right? It's just gonna completely fill in. So you wanna keep moving down. And if anything's too much, you can add a little bit of black. And you want it to be brighter in some areas and duller in others. And a little bit of the dampness in the brush definitely helps. And you don't wanna go in just a straight line across. Try to kind of move up and down. Okay, so now I'm starting to get down lower. I'm gonna add a little bit more white into my paint. And you're gonna see that that stands out a lot more. See how bright that is? compared to what I had. So that's perfect for down in the foreground. My brush is starting to get a little bit dry. A little bit of water is gonna go a long, long way, so be careful when you're adding more water. I'm going right over that path line so that it kind of disappears. And you can make your path thinner if you want by just adding more grass going to the center. And you can also use both techniques. So if you wanna add in some grass in that way, and then you can come back in with your little flat brush, and you can add some detail. Using the edge of your brush, it's really easy to make straight lines with the edge of this brush. 
and I'm going to do it in kind of little clusters. So I don't want it to look like a ruler because, right, this is nature, even though this is kind of whimsical. I'm going to go back with more of my green with a little bit of red in it to get that darker green to do my little detail brush strokes back here. And if you like to go really wild with your color, something cool you can try is dipping your brush in your green and just barely dip the corner in white and you can try that out you'll see you get little shaded they look like they have a little shadow and a little highlight all right so you can fill in as much grass as you'd like when i look up here at this line that looks too much like a line to me so I'm gonna take my little brush and I'm gonna see if I can just mess it up a little bit. Maybe it dips down a little bit more in one area. The next thing we're going to add in are our trees. So you can use this brush if you're feeling a little timid, you want to, a little hesitant, and you want to be really careful at first, you can use this brush. I'm going to switch to my flat brush that's a little bit bigger. So I'm going to dip that in my brush, dab it on my paper towel. You could use straight burnt sienna if you want to. I'm going to take burnt sienna and I'm going to mix in a little bit of the green and a little bit of the red. And to me, this burnt sienna and this is Liquitex paint, by the way. This burnt sienna is a little bit translucent, and so I want it to feel a little bit fuller. Okay, so again, remembering by using the edge of your brush, if you press down really hard, you're gonna get a thick line. So I'm gonna start to add in some trees. So I'll start off over on the left side of the canvas I'm gonna go right to the bottom of my path here and I'm gonna use the edge of my brush and all I'm gonna do is a vertical line. And I'm gonna go all the way to the top of the canvas. And you wanna remember that this is a tree. It's not supposed to be perfectly straight and it'll actually look more realistic if it's not. So if you want to, it's not like you want to zigzag, but you can lightly kind of wobble your brush as you go up. And this glare is pretty crazy. So I'm gonna just turn these here to see if that helps a little bit. I can move that out. Oh, maybe that was helping. Okay, so then I'm gonna go in. In order to make it look natural, I don't want them all in a row exactly the same size. So now I'm gonna come down, go over to the right about an inch or two, I'm gonna come down 
and I'm going to add in another tree. And I'm going to go over about an inch or two and I'll do another one in this one because it's so close to the moon. I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller. So you should be starting to kind of run out of paint and that's the perfect time to do trees that are in the background on the other side. So I'm gonna use the edge of my brush while there's barely any paint on there. I'm gonna go over to the right of my moon now. And this is almost right in the center of my canvas. It's over just a little bit. And I'm gonna do just some little you can even do some short ones once you're really running out of paint. They look like they're really, really off in the distance. And I'm gonna come over. So with painting and with artwork, it becomes more realistic when there's overlap. So you might think like, oh, I love this little paint pine tree. I don't wanna paint over it, but you actually do because that overlap is gonna give it interest. So I'm gonna use the edge of my brush here. Press down a little bit harder. I'm gonna leave a little gap here and come down a little bit. So let's see, I'm gonna to go to my bottom right corner. You can go up about three inches and go over about a half inch. And you can really place your trees anywhere you'd like. I'm just kind of showing you what I'm gonna do. And go over about an inch, do another one. Maybe I'll do one more, kind of little short one there. So after you get them in there, you can then start thickening them up, especially at the bottom. Make them a little bit thicker at the bottom. The ones that are light in the background, don't do too much with those because you want them to look like they're far away. But these ones here that are right up front, you can make those stand out a little bit more. And then you can start to add on branches. So branches are actually really easy to do. So I've got my vertical line, which is my tree trunk. And then I'm gonna use the edge of my brush to create Y's that are coming off. And I can also show you on the side here. So I've got my tree trunk. Use the edge of my brush, start on the tree trunk, and take off from there. And slowly lift your brush off the canvas. And that's going to give you those kind of pointy ends to your branches. So your branches can aim more upwards if you'd like, or they can also kind of point more sideways. So that's kind of personal preference. And then to add in smaller branches, you can just go from there using the edge of your brush and adding on more and more little Y's. You can make little teeny ones. You can have really big ones. And you just want it to look very varied so that it looks more realistic. So I'm gonna take my brush, and if your brush is really dry, you can dab it in your water, dab it on your paper towel. That's kind of, having a damp brush is kind of nice for, for doing trees. So now I'm gonna start with my bigger ones while I have more paint on my brush. So I'll come over here. And again, overlapping is fine. It's just gonna make it look more realistic. You can kind of choose which tree you want to be the one that's in front. So for me, this one appears to be the closest because it's down the furthest. So I'm gonna have its branches go right in front. I'm gonna have some branches go right off the edge of the canvas. And I'm not gonna go over my moon completely. Some of you may choose to do that, but I am gonna kind of frame my moon.
And as I'm running out of paint, now I have barely any paint on my brush. That's the perfect time to do these ones that are kind of far off in the distance. So it looks just really light on the canvas. Barely can see it. Okay, once you get your branches pretty filled in there, there's a few things you can do. So for one, if you want to do a highlight, you can either leave your brush with the burnt sienna on it. And one way to do it is just dip one corner of your brush, and maybe your pale yellow. This is going to be for a more dramatic effect. So I can take that and go up the edge. You can see how that really, so I'm lining up the highlight, the pale yellow on the side closest to the moon and using the flat side of my brush to drag up. That's gonna give you a very dramatic highlight. If you want something a little bit less, you can take your brush, clean it out in your water and grab some of that pale yellow and you don't even have to use the pale yellow, you can use any lighter color. And using the edge of your brush, you can just go along. The, what I like to do whatever edge is closest to the moon. So on this tree, the left side is the closest. So I'm just gonna use the edge of my brush to just kind of very lightly go along the left there. And if it's too much, like you want it to be less noticeable, you can just wipe your brush. You have less paint on it. And let's say you do some of it and you're like, that's just way too much for me. While it's drying or while it's still wet, you can take your tree color, your burnt sienna there, and you can brush right over it. See how that kind of blended that in? And keep in mind with a darker painting like this where we're working dark to light, Things are going to look a lot brighter to you up close while you're working on it. And then when you put the painting back on the wall, it's going to be hard to even see some parts of it. So kind of keep that in mind. So you can add in some highlights. You can also add some shadows. So using the edge of my brush, and if you want to clean it out, you can. But since we're using black, as long as there's not a ton of white, you probably don't need to. And I'm going to use the edge of my brush to do some little short brush strokes using the edge. I can show you on the side. I'm basically kind of doing this. And that's going to create some texture for the tree bark. And it doesn't need to be on all of them. And if you wanted to add a little bit of shadow on any of them, you can. The side that's furthest from the moon. And up close, they'll look like little brush strokes because that's what they are. But from far away, it'll give more of an illusion of texture that would be on on a tree branch. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take black, but I'm going to brush my brush back and forth to kind of 
wipe off most of it so there's barely any there. I'm going to take the flat side of my brush and I'm going to lightly brush up the bottoms of the trees because they're in the grass. So they wouldn't start suddenly. They'd have kind of a little, a little shadow at the bottom there. And I can show you over here. So using the flat side, I'm just kind of flicking my brush upwards to create a little shadow down there. All right, when, all, when you're finished adding in your tree branches, we're gonna start with our leaves. So I'm gonna show you a few techniques you can use. So one starting with this half inch flat, clean my brush off, dab it on my paper towel, but leaving it kind of damp. I'm gonna use the same Kind of green colors so again if you want it really bright you can use straight green I'm gonna tone mine down a little bit with some red and then I'm gonna add a little bit of white so that I can see it a little bit All right, so now we're gonna be using this brush in a different way. And this is where your different sizes come into play. So you can also use your even smaller 1 8 inch brush. So you're gonna use the edge of your brush as a stamp. So instead of dragging like we did with the pine trees and like we've done with the blades of grass, you're gonna use the edge like a stamp. So I'm gonna show you over here on the side. I'm gonna use the edge and I'm stamping in little sections of pine needles. And these, these this is a whimsical fantasy painting. So, you know, there's no particular tree that it has to be. And then the other thing you can do, so I'll show you that on here. Is you can also go over the tops of some of them with just a teeny bit of white. And I'll show you more of that in a little bit. And that can add a little bit of highlight. So you can do this with any of your flat brushes. So if I'm trying to do on a really small branch, I can use that really small brush and I can come in and and again this is nature so you want it to be you can make it messy doesn't need to be perfect because then it'll look more like an arrow and you can also use your large flat brush and I'm going to use the edge of this and I'm holding my brush horizontally and honestly that's pretty bright I've got a lot of white in my paint I'm just going to tone that down the darker version I can use the edge of my brush to do some bigger pieces like maybe there's some pieces that are off trees that are outside of the canvas where we can't see them and they're kind of coming in from the side. So this brush can kind of be used to just fill it in a little bit more. If you get tired of using your teeny little brush. And if you're not getting the same mark, you know, try out on the side, try getting rid of some of your paint. When there's not enough paint, 
then you get more of these marks that have lots of little dots in them. If I have a ton of paint, it's gonna get a, give a different look, which is not necessarily bad. It just looks like a different kind of leaf. Okay, so we'll just go and fill in our tree branches a little bit here. Remembering to overlap and that the greenery can even come out of nowhere. There doesn't even need to be a branch there for you to add it in. And you don't want to have just bare tree trunks at the top. You can add a little bit up there too. When you run out of paint, if you want to add a little on yours that are far in the distance, you can. I'm going to go in with a little bit of white again, just to really have some pieces kind of stand out. When you're finished with your trees, you can start with your detail brush, clean it out, we're going to do some mushrooms. So I'll show you really big over on the side here. So first you need to make an underpainting color. If you go in straight with red, onto the canvas and try to paint in a mushroom, it's gonna be very transparent and you're gonna be able to see right through it and it's not gonna really stand out. So we're gonna do an underpainting. So you're gonna need your color. So I'm gonna take white and if you still have some pale yellow left over and you don't think you're gonna use it, you can use that. And I'm gonna add in a little dab of my cadmium red. Again, a little bit's gonna go a long, long way. You could use a light pink if you want it to be a little bit more orangey. You can add just a teeny bit more yellow. And 
and you can paint any kind of mushroom that you like. I'm going to do basically two styles on this painting. So one style that I'm going to do, I'm going to start off So I'm basically going to show you two styles of mushrooms. So one style that I'm going to show you is, I'll show you over on the side here, you can do a vertical line and then you can add a horizontal wavy line over the top of that vertical line. And then you want to add a triangle to it, but you want the triangle to be wavy and then you'll fill it in and directly below that you want kind of a curved brush stroke that's curving downwards and once you get that in there you can make the stem flare out at the bottom so you can make it wider at the bottom so i know that's kind of hard to see with on top of the white but i just want to paint it larger so that you can see it a little bit better and I can outline it in red so we did our horizontal wavy line and then turn it into a triangle but have it rounded at the top and kind of wavy and then make our stem flare out at the bottom and then we have a brush stroke that kind of curves downwards. So I'm going to go into my canvas and again variation is key. So some big mushrooms, some small mushrooms. So I want my biggest brightest mushroom again to be close to my golden mean. So in one of these four quadrants. So it's not going to be quite because I it's down in my foreground but roughly. So I'm going to go to my bottom right corner if you want to go over about three inches and go up about three inches that's where i'm going to do my first one but you can really do it wherever you'd like so i'm going to do a vertical line and then i'm going to do a horizontal wavy line and then do the top I've got my little detail brush. I'm going to fill it in. And then I've got a brush stroke that is curving down. It's like a little crescent that's pointing towards the bottom of the canvas. And then I'll make my stem just a little bit bigger. and flared out at the bottom. So it's going to be my biggest mushroom. The other style of mushroom that I'm going to do is going to be more of a rounded top. So it's just going to be like you just took a half circle. So maybe I'll go over on the left side of this side of my path and I'm just going to do a half circle and then a vertical line for the stem and have it kind of flare out and then I'm just going to fill that in. Now I'm going to do lots of little baby mushrooms. So maybe over here on the side of the path there's some kind of curving over into the path. You can have them be overlapping if you're seeing a lot of the texture of your canvas, add a little bit of water to your paint. That's fine for this part. We'll just make it easier for you. I'm doing just little half circle tops on these. 
Maybe there's a little lone one out here. And again, it helps to have some coming off the edge of the canvas. Some medium ones. And you do not need to wait for that to dry. So once you get your mushrooms in there, you can start adding on the tops. If at any point you want to switch to a different brush that's a little bit bigger, if you feel more comfortable with that, you, you can. I'm going to just keep using my little detail brush here. So I'm going to use straight cadmium red. And look how bright and vibrant that looks with the underpainting. So I'm not going to fill in the whole thing because I want it to look like we're seeing the bottom of the mushroom where the gills are. So I'm going to leave just a little bit of our peachy color showing there. And if your paint isn't completely dry and it kind of mixes in a little bit, that's fine. No big deal. So now, the reason we have this alizarin crimson is because I want some of my mushrooms to be a little bit more purple. So I'm going to take some of that alizarin, and you can mix in, you could mix this a lot of different ways. You could do some of your green, you can do a teeny little bit of black, that's what I'm going to do. It's going to give me a nice kind of pretty dark mauvey rosy color and I'm going to fill it in leaving just a little edge at the bottom and maybe you want to leave some of the peachy color that's fine too. I'm 
And you can add variation by just changing the color a little bit. Maybe you just add a little bit more white on some or a little more alizarin on some. You could even do actual purple if you got a little bit of a bright blue out. And it would be fun to see if any of you just kind of filled it in with a ton of mushrooms. I think that would be kind of neat. So after you get them filled in, you can decide what kind of details that you want to add. You could do polka dots, you could do lines. Um, lines would be kind of like lines coming off the top and following the edge. You could do peach colored polka dots. So I could come to my darker mushrooms. Could add little dots. I'm going to go for the standard white polka dot on my big red ones. So using white paint and just doing little dots. It's important to have them going off the edge of the mushroom as well. Maybe for my peachy color, I'll do some lines. From here, you can either take your smaller flat brush and do black paint, but not too much, just like you did with your tree trunks. And you can brush a little bit up so that it looks kind of faded in. And do that especially if it's dark around the stem. If it's not dark black around the stem, it's very green, then you might want to take some of your grass and do some little blades of grass in front of it. I recommend putting your painting up so you can kind of see it from far away, and then you can decide what you want to do. So if you wanted to have your mushrooms be brighter, you can add more white to your peach color and kind of paint that in. If you want your stems to be knocked back a little bit, you can make them a little darker. So if I was trying to, let's say I wanted to knock this back or make it look a little bit peachier, I could go in, because now that we have the white underpainting, we can kind of do anything over the top of it. I am not a uh, mushroom anatomy expert, even though I took a 
a very long course on it one night. I didn't retain a ton of information. For any of you that have gone down that road, mushrooms are very, very scientific and there's a lot to it. Um, and my brain kind of started to just shut off. <laughs> so mushrooms are not necessarily my thing. But whatever this little piece is underneath, you can add a little shadow if you want. And then for the last step, we're gonna add some stars. So if your water is dirty, go ahead and clean it out. Okay, so for the next part, we're gonna add in some stars. So for this, I'm gonna use my size seven pointed round brush. And there's lots of ways you can do this. You can paint them one by one. Some people like to use toothbrushes. I just use my brush and I go straight from my water. And I'm gonna take some of my paint white paint and then I want to mix it around with water until it gets to be like soupy ice cream. So I'm going back and forth, mixing it around, getting it all over and acrylic paint does not come out of clothes. So don't wear your favorite outfit when you do this because paint can fly. And then I'm going to use my left hand, I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna take my left hand, I'm gonna hold the brush at the end of the handle, and I'm gonna take my right hand and I'm gonna tap right below the bristles. I'm not gonna tap on the actual brush so I get it all over my hand, but right below there. And I would start off on the side first to see how it's coming out before you go onto your canvas. So once you get it to where you like it, you may find that you need more water or just less paint altogether, then you can start doing little taps. It's just kind of bouncing up and down. So right around my moon, and I want them in clusters. I don't want them everywhere all over the place. So maybe some are out here. And now I'm gonna go until I kind of start to run out, and that's gonna help me get some little smaller ones. And some of them may have landed over the tops of your trees. This is a very whimsical painting, so to me that, that doesn't really matter. But if it bothers you, it's very easy. While if the paint is still wet, just take a little paper towel, get it damp, and you can just wipe it off. So anywhere, I've got a damp little piece of paper towel, anywhere you don't like it, you can just brush it off it hasn't dried yet. Look, and some may even turn into highlights on branches. And you could do it everywhere and it could be like little, little fairies glistening around your trees. So that's one way of taking out a few stars if you wanted to. Another thing you can do just as a last step is if you wanted to add any shadow back in. So if you look at it from far away and you're like, whoa, this like looks too bright or I want it to be darker, you could come in with any brush and you could add some black. Let's say you wanted to add some shadow to some of your tree branches. If some of those looked too dark, you could add some little black brush strokes to the bottoms of those. You could add more of your tree bark if you wanted to. If any of your grassy areas look too bright, like I had that, that liney edge back here, I can use black and knock it back. You can knock it back. You can add more detail, add less detail. Maybe I thought those pines were kind of too bright. Or maybe I wanted to add some shadow. I can use the edge of my brush. You can add some shadow grass using the edge of your brush in front of your tree trunks. 
or if any of your grass just got super filled in, maybe you had a ton of paint on your brush at one point, and you just want to add a little bit more definition back in. And I do this at the very end. And that way you can kind of, and this is typical for painting, you kind of build it up, knock it back. Build it up, knock it back. If you wanted your moon to be a little bit darker after you thought about it. Which I probably don't, so I don't even know why I'm doing this right now, because I love it when it's super, super bright and crazy. I'm probably going to leave mine. Add some to your little mushrooms. It's going towards the bottom in front of them. You could even add some blades of grass in front of your mushrooms. Maybe that one has a little piece that's so just peeking out behind. So now it's time for just the fun little, little details. When you're all finished, don't forget to sign your painting. Thank you so much for painting with me today. This is my first painting class in literally years. Um, life just happened and I was trying to keep up, but I'm excited to make some more paintings for you guys and to paint along with you. Um, please send me pictures of your paintings or um, post any questions that you have in the comments. And I hope you have fun painting this. I was inspired by a little journal cover that I saw at the store that I thought was so cute and so whimsical and I love mushroom hunting so I thought that I would kind of honor that with this little painting. Thank you so much and I hope you have fun!